fresh out of a breakup and feeling numb. Part 2. Update 9. My relationship ended around three months ago when I caught my lover cheating on me. It's safe to say that it was a terrible show. The way it transpired devastated me, and I felt like the majority of my relationship was a lie. I've gained a lot of great lessons that I hope will benefit someone else. Always go with your gut instinct. Don't dismiss red signs, particularly if others closest to you identify them in your spouse. Compare your partner's words to their actions. Make no justifications for them in your mind. If you're dating someone who is unhappy, don't make it your duty to make them happy. Don't attempt to repair someone else, and don't date someone who may be what you're looking for. They're either there or they're not. Don't be afraid of loneliness. It's not nearly as terrible as dating or marrying the wrong person for you. When you are being insulted or gaslighted, speak up for yourself. Do not disregard a partner's history of bad moral judgments or lack of integrity, unless they have acknowledged their weaknesses and made an attempt to correct them. The most essential thing I've learned is to put my own pleasure and well-being first. There's nothing wrong with being picky about the people you let into your life and the kind of relationships you're ready to consider. I think that life occurs to you rather than to you. As a result, even though I am still in anguish as a result of what occurred, it has pushed me to confront my own weaknesses and demons. Aside from that, since I've been devoting a lot of time to self-development over the past several months, I've had to fully break relations with my unfaithful ex. I explored reconciliation at one point, but as time passed, I recognized the severity of her infidelity. She would have given me hundreds, if not thousands of falsehoods in the latter months of our relationship while she deceived me. I suspected it as well and questioned her on many occasions. But I was treated with gaslighting and manipulation. I don't want to discourage anybody who is attempting to reconcile. I admire you and drew inspiration from you. But, having seen the genuine person my ex is, warts and all, I can't picture a scenario in which I would ever allow someone like her to have a place in my life, even if I loved the person I thought she was. I've been looking for a way to experience relief after closing the chapter for a long time. It's not easy, but it feels right. I wish to cultivate a more intimate connection with myself until I am really happy and full of self-love. Maybe then I'll think about starting a new relationship. I hope you found this information useful. If you're going through anything similar, please accept my best wishes. Update 10. I'm embarrassed to have to publish this since I've been in such a good mood since breaking up with my ex. However, I awoke this morning to a text from my ex that reopened some of my wounds. For reference, we had been dating for two years and were set to marry. I discovered in a horrifying manner that she had cheated on me with her neighbor, whom she said was merely a friend and in whom she had no interest. I caught her after she refused to confess. In reality, she told me hundreds of falsehoods about her friendship that blossomed into an affair this year. I indicated that she and I kept in touch after D-Day. I was torn between entirely separating and reconciling. She added that a man she was acquainted with in college, let's call him Bob, has begun messaging her in the past two months and that he's interested in her, but she isn't. I didn't think anything of it since I knew we were no longer together and I trusted her when she claimed she wasn't interested in him or dating anybody. She just wanted me back and couldn't see herself with anybody else. When I closed the doors for reconciliation a week ago, I had addressed her earlier that day about moving on, and she told me that she had no desire in doing so and prefers to stay alone. I told her that was okay, and that I hoped she met someone nice and was happy in the future. We separated in a satisfactory manner, and that was the end of it. She contacts me today and expresses her sadness, loneliness, and distress. She misses me so badly that she went to a theme park with Bob and four of his other pals this weekend since he invited her, and she simply missed me a lot. This irritated and pained me greatly. Please correct me if I'm wrong or illogical in my thinking, but isn't this precisely what she did throughout our relationship? Why bring up this person and tell me you have no interest in him just to accept an invitation days later? She hoped that if I heard this, I'd think how much she must miss me to be with another man, but I saw it as yet another kind of betrayal. Is this feeling illogical or immature on my part? What's the point of telling me X when she's feeling Y? Why go create a circumstance that is so similar to what she did in our relationship that lead to its demise? Update 11. I find myself reliving previous occurrences in my head on a daily basis. It had been a long time since I made the intentional choice not to reconcile, and having that degree of closure was beneficial overall. The drama is over, and I'm back in a more regular place. Days are more predictable, 
and I feel like I'm regaining control of my life. Dare I admit that there are certain days when I'm truly very happy. I'll be singing along to music again, working hard, and looking for pleasant interactions with others around me. On the other hand, there are days when I am abruptly overcome with sensations of agony. Even when I'm having a wonderful day, I think about my ex and what occurred. But it won't take over my day or my feelings. It's on terrible days that I struggle the most with events that have occurred. In my instance, my ex not only cheated on me, but she also lied to me for months and gaslighted me. I believed she was cheating, and when I confronted her, I was faced with gaslighting. Those events are replaying in my head. I find myself wishing I had handled the situation differently, that I had leapt sooner, that I could have pushed Abbott harder and been harsher at the time. But I also see that with faith, there is no need to do so, and I trusted my ex, so despite my reservations, I opted to believe what she was saying at the time. It's needless to take shots at me and claim that I'm insecure or intimidated. Looking back, knowing that I was duped has an impact on me on bad days. What are some things I can do to lessen the effect of those thoughts and emotions on bad days? How did you manage to get away from ruminating about these things? I am certain that my future will be bright. I'm avoiding any potentially harmful actions. I haven't recovered, and I'm growing used to being on my own. But I've realized that mending isn't a straight line. I'd be grateful for any suggestions or simply to hear about your experiences with this. Final update. Hopefully, this is the last update on my condition. Last year, I routinely blogged about my circumstances. I found out my girlfriend was having an affair. I found out on our anniversary, just as I was about to propose. I won't go into too much detail, but it was a shambles, and I had to deal with her insane AP, who was attacking me in a variety of ways. There were several ups and downs. I thought about reconciling, but my ex was too inconsistent. All trust has been broken. I watched a lot of everyday mental movies because I saw things that no one wants to see. I had so many unanswered questions that I felt like I had squandered so much time, effort, and money, and to top it all off, the trauma of betrayal affected my emotions on a daily basis. However, I was ultimately able to break free. I took the choice not to reconcile, and for the first month or two, I was met with opposition for myself. Fears and anxieties would have an impact on me. It was very terrible to go away while being so deceived, but I'm happy to report that after more time, a lot of effort on my end to heal emotionally and confront everything. Surrendering to reality and letting go of the chapter, I'm feeling much better. I am a firm believer in the idea that life occurs to you rather than to you. Because of how happy I feel on some days, I'm even more convinced of this these days. It isn't ideal. As you are all aware, you are still dealing with certain ideas and feelings. But I'm not tied to what occurred anymore. I don't classify myself anymore as a betrayed partner or anything. I've moved on from that whole relationship and era of my life. So now I'm simply constructing a new self. I'm just me, a work in progress. And I have to admit, it feels fantastic. I'm feeling the most at ease I've felt in a long time. I pray on a regular basis. I exercise on a daily basis. I eat clean. I spend a lot of time with myself, focusing on my emotions and thoughts. I read self-help books on a daily basis. I cut out a lot of toxic people from my life and strengthen my relationships with those who make me feel good. I work with enthusiasm, I have goals, and I do things that I enjoy. This is the most balanced my life has looked in a long time, yet I've had to endure a lot to get here. It was not easy, but it was very powerful because I regained control of my life. I did not go back, I did not engage in vices, I did not push anything, I did not flee the trauma, and I stopped categorizing myself based on the behavior of others. The road ahead is still long, but if this is any indication of what's to come, I'm really optimistic about the future. You have to put an end to the infidelity videos, ongoing pain shopping, and ruminating at some time. That was preventing me from embracing the conclusion of a chapter in my life. It may take you a half year, as it did for me, or it could take you several years. But you'll get there whether via reconciliation or not. But you must do what is tough, but necessary for your soul, future, mental health, and happiness. I hope this provides you some solace and hope. Stay strong and please accept my best wishes. Thank you to everyone who took the time to advise me.